Erev Tov Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. The world turning against Israel. It's kind of straight and to the point there, but uh, we're going to be looking at a couple of things here uh, this evening in the news. Uh, three different actual articles all on Israel National News. And specifically in light of the first one here, Temple Mount visits caused current terror wave. Uh, we're going to have to correct uh, this ideology behind uh, this particular report uh, from the religious magazine Merkur Rishon's fault journalist uh, Reno Soror claimed uh, their claim on Wednesday there. Uh, and something that I picked up a little extra in the look at uh, the, the current terror wave, the Third Intifada, as those of you that watch Israeli News Live know already, we have linked this directly with Ezekiel's 35, uh, chapter 35 prophecy. Uh, but this afternoon, as I began to look in at the Lord was so kind to reveal more about this and may shed some new interesting light on this very uh, intifada and what it means and even timing of uh, the arrival of the two witnesses. Uh, when the Vatican will actually try to take over uh, the two countries that they have created there etc. And by the way, uh, today on I-24 uh, uh, television in the Czech Republic, in the Czech language there, they were speaking about in a documentary there how that the Catholic Church owns the majority of the land in Israel. That's something I did not know myself. Very interesting. I'd like to try to corroborate that information somehow. Uh, if any of you guys watching have any suggestions, please let me know about that as well. Israel National News, April 13th, 2016, the current terror wave in National Religious Magazine, Mekor Rishon's fault journalist, Renzo Tsor, claiming Wednesday, this intifada of the few with knives and scissors, which is fading away these days, at least to the naked eye, began after a large increase of Jewish visitors to the Temple Mount. Tsor said during an army radio broadcast, this was the match it set the fire on September 2015, seven months ago today, which until now has killed 43 individuals. I actually would like to up that to 44 because they're not claiming the first victim uh, that was killed there right there, uh, right off of Ben Yudas Street in a bar there by a Palestinian terrorist as well. They didn't officially log that as a terrorist attack uh, at the time. Uh, there were two that were stabbed, one wounded, one was killed. Uh, we were there at the scene when that actually took place in Jerusalem. Uh, but anyway, uh, so to me it's actually 44. So it was not the uh, actual Intifada did not start because of the radio broadcast, which by the way, the radio broadcast often uh, has, has asked people to visit the Temple Mount. And they don't do it for violence by no means. They just do it because they want to go there to pray is what their desire is. Uh, and with the Passover now approaching, uh, there is no doubt going to be more controversy. I know that the Temple Institute is planning, uh, whether they're actually planning to do a sacrifice or just a mock version as close as they can to the Temple Mount, I think it's more of a mock version of the sacrificial ceremony uh, that they're planning on doing. I am against a sacrificial ceremony completely uh, because to me, Yeshua was that ultimate sacrifice and there is no need of another. Uh, anyway, continuing on into the broadcast here, Ezekiel 35, 5, and also verses 9 through 15. Let's look at this carefully again, because thou has had a, per a perpetual hatred. And he's talking about Esau in this case here. He calls it Mount Seir. He calls it uh, Edomia in, in another place here near the 15th chapter. Uh, but Edomia... Uh, is another name for Edom or Esau's descendants here. So he says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by force of the sword in the time of their calamity, 70 AD. Uh, we clear, see this clearly in Obadiah's prophecy showed, shared with that the other day there. God indicts Esau for the, uh, for the destruction of Jerusalem of 70 AD. And in the time that their iniquity had an end, we went over that as well. Daniel's prophecy, when he talks about the 70th week of Daniel, the things that are to be accomplished in that 70th week, one was reconciliation for iniquity. Daniel chapter 9, I think it's verse 24, 25 there. Reconciliation for iniquity. See, it says, in the time that their iniquity had an end, 
We see Yeshua dying on the cross satisfied God's requirement. But the problem is, is there's still no reconciliation for iniquity. The iniquity is that, that the Jews delivered him to the Romans to be killed. Okay, that's, that's their iniquity. That's why I argue as far as the, the, the sacrificial uh, order there, because you have to understand sacrificing was a permissive will of God. We see that by the prophet Ezekiel clearly makes that known. Jeremiah says, you know, you know, and even Isaiah as well, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. So God's main desire was for mercy. Uh, but he permitted sacrificing. He allowed that with Moses. We find that also in the sense of James, if you study that as well, part of the Syriac uh, fragments there, where uh, it's not like 95% of the New Testament is from that particular uh, book there. But at, at that point there, we find, though, that Israel then is held guilty for handing over Yeshua to the Romans to be killed uh, because it was not God's perfect will to do it like this. But... We do know, though, had Yeshua not given his life. See, now that, there's a difference. They handed him over to kill him. Yeshua willingly gave his life because he knew that he had to give his life in order to bring about redemption. All right? So, there, there is, so it's kind of an awkward way of looking at that uh, because if Israel had been perfectly just in having him killed, then there should, have not, there should be no blood uh, guilt on them. Uh, there should be no responsibility for his death. Why would we be uh, blaming Israel for Yeshua's death if they were only carrying out the sacrificial order that God required in, uh, through the Levitical law to begin with? You see, so it doesn't make sense there. So, but what does it have? You know, Yeshua has to be struck, though. He has to be judged by the elders of Israel, according to what we see when God says uh, to Moses, take the elders of Israel without, with, with you, go out there and smite the rock that it bring forth its waters. See, so Yeshua had to be smitten. That rock had to be smitten in order to bring forth that water of life. See, so these things had to happen, but that was through his gift. His free gift is what does that, not the fact that they were wanting to hand him over. See, the heart was wrong. Their heart was there for malice, not for a good cause. Anyway, so it says, in the time that their iniquity had an end, that is when the iniquity will be reconciled. The reconciliation of the iniquity will be when the two witnesses actually come. Now, I didn't realize this originally. When they come, they are coming to reconcile Israel back to God. This is where they come to reconcile. See, Yeshua has already paid the price. He cannot come until the two witnesses have reconciled Israel back to God. Now watch what happens here. I will make thee a perpetual desolation, and thy city shall not return, and you shall know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, and we will possess it, whereas the Lord was there. See, he was there 2,000 years ago. Right? But watch what it says. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine. It was the Vatican that helped create both states. The Vatican using the Jews to create a Jewish state. And they also have announced and made official a Palestinian state. They're the ones in behind us. People say, well, you know, it was, the, it was the Rothschilds. Well, the Rothschilds bought a lot of land, helped the Israel state become a state as well. But now I'm finding out, according to the documentary today, that the Vatican owns the majority of the land in Israel. No wonder why so many Israeli politicians bow down to the Catholic Church and are so apt to want to entreat them well in the country there. They're sitting on a lot of the land that the Vatican owns. This is why. Anyway. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger and according to thine envy, which thou hast ha used out of thy hatred against them. And I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Now, that's interesting. We're going to get into that in a moment. He's, God will make his self known to them when he judges them, just like Joseph. Joseph makes his self known to the Jewish people, to his brethren. But it's at a specific time. And there's a, we know exactly when this time will be. I'll share with that in a minute. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that, that I have heard all the blasphemies which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel, saying they are laid desolate, they are given us to consume. That's interesting right there too. Hold that one. 
See, they're laid desolate. They are given us to consume. So it's not just going to be an antifada, friends. There's going to come a war on Israel. And when Israel goes through a war, she's going to suffer some heavy defeat. That's when they're going to say they are laid desolate. They are given us to consume. But there's already two nations. There's already two countries. Yet those two countries were already there before this intifada that's spoken of in Ezekiel 35. Verse 14, Thus saith the Lord God, When the whole earth rejoice, I will make thee desolate, as thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Notice that one in verse 15, As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel. In other words, when Israel was laid waste, Jerusalem in 70 AD, they rejoiced. That's right there on the Ark of Titus. Been there seeing it myself. That's their rejoicing over their destruction there. So I will do unto thee, thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all of Edomia, even all of it, they shall know that I am the Lord. That's fascinating to me right there because God clearly identifies the one that, that Edomia that does it was the one that was rejoicing over Israel's destruction in 70 AD. And then he says, I will make you desolate. Rome's got a judgment day coming, friends. By the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, as we say, Ark of Titus, this is the time of their calamity. He shows that in that there. In the time that their iniquity had an end, Ezekiel 35, 9, the last part of the verse there. In the expos, the Vatican wants to lay its hands on Jerusalem, the Israel National News by Guglio Miotti. It states here, this is, now this is how we know, this is how we know who incites the violence. It's not... Israel's army radio that's inciting the violence. There will be, this was on 12-15 uh, of 2011, there will be no peace if the question of the holy sites is not adequately resolved. Turan, that's Cardinal Jean Turan, made this statement here. The part of Jerusalem within the walls with the holy sites and the three religions is humanity's heritage. The sacred and unique character of the area must be safeguarded and it can only be done with a special international guaranteed statute. These two nations will be ours. See, they're working on it, friends. Vatican signs treaty to recognize the state of Palestine, the times of Israel, June 26 of 2015, because thou hast said these two nations, these two countries shall be mine. Now watch what it says in the article. The Vatican had welcomed the decision by the UN General Assembly in 2012 to recognize a Palestinian state. But the treaty is the first legal document negotiated between the Holy See and the Palestinian state constitutes an official recognition. An official recognition. So it's not official when the UN General Assembly does it, but when the Vatican does it, now it's official. And here you have not just a Palestinian state, you got... He's already got Shimon Perez already promised to give the Vatican everything they want. And of course, Shimon Perez, according to the, uh, he was in the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, I'm sorry, Yitzhak Rabin's autobiography mentions about how Shimon Perez went to a Jesuit school back in, uh, in Europe, in, in, in uh, Poland. Interesting, isn't it? When the whole earth rejoice, I will make thee desolate, says Ezekiel 35, 14. Well, that's exactly right. When is the whole earth going to rejoice? According to Revelation 11, 9, and 10, and they of the people and the kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies, that's the two witnesses who've been killed, three days and a half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So when does the whole earth rejoice at the death of the two witnesses. Isn't that fascinating to know? So let me back up before I get into Bernie Sanders here. All right. I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. Now he judges Rome when the earth rejoices after the death of the two witnesses. That's when Yeshua makes himself known to Israel. And that's when they will look upon him and ask about the wounds that he got. They will look upon him, according to Zechariah 12, the one they have pierced. And they will weep as a family that lost their only son. By the way, that's all Jews. That's not Romans either. I had one person write me one time, and I know as a precious person meant well by it. And they said, well, it's the Romans that recognize him. No, according to the scripture, it's Jews that it's the house of David, the house of uh, of, of, of uh, Levi, the house of Nathan, the house of Shemai, 
All these are the tribes of the house of, the house of Judah. So it is God holds the house of Judah responsible for the death of Yeshua, handing him over to be killed. That's why they mourn and they look upon him. I can't hardly believe they did it. See? So anyway, that, this, is, this is who is guilty. It's not as that article said on Jewish Army Radio. Again, here we got another. This is really odd here. Sanders. Uh, I don't know if he's really going. I, I need somebody. If somebody can know for sure. Is he canceling his trip or is he really going to the Vatican? If he's really going to the Vatican, I was going to try to get there to cover that uh, myself in person. Uh, but th th it is closed. To, I've already gotten a letter from the Vatican saying that it is closed to the public. Uh, but uh, I would like to at least try to cover that if he's going. But if he's not going, I don't want to go down to, the, to Rome. It's only about, about an hour flight from where I'm at. Anyway, the Jewish Telegraph Agency uh, recently broke the news that Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders had hired an avowed anti-Zionist as his national Jewish outreach director. So uh, what's he doing? Is he, try is he trying to help his own people or is he trying to help uh, the... Um, the Palestinians. He, he really reminds me. I have to say, Bernie Sanders reminds me of Jimmy Carter. I, I tell you, it's exactly what he reminds me of. A Jewish Jimmy Carter instead of a Baptist. Uh, Simone Zimmerman is a supporter of the extremist Jewish Voice for Peace, which the ADL named as one of America's top 10 anti-Israel hate groups. An advocate for the anti-Israel BDS boycott movement who has regularly led far-left protests against the establishment of Jewish American groups, such as the Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations. And now, even if he doesn't speak of the Vatican or not, the Vatican has made it clear he is their pick. I kind of wonder if he's not going to end up being Hillary's vice president. I think that's why Hillary's not speaking evil of him. Did you notice that in some of her statements there? I don't, I, you know, it's funny. I normally don't get into politics a whole lot, but I, I've been kind of watching. It's been really a strange situation going on there. Ted Cruz, they want to get him in because as they're desperate, the, the Republicans are. They hate the fact that uh, Donald Trump is paying his own way, you know, and I don't say Donald Trump is some knight in shining armor. You know, I think he means well, but, uh, uh, you know, but I don't know. Maybe he's better than the rest of the nuts that they got out there. Who knows? Uh, but uh, been some strange things going on uh, in, in all this election. Another uh, thing that's going on as well, let me just bring this up to you here in closing our news broadcast. broadcast. This is uh, Israel National News has, uh, did this report here. It's been on RT News quite a bit as well. Uh, clear and present threat of chemical attacks in Europe. Israel National News on April 13th of 2013. Russia on Wednesday pushed for measures at the United Nations to monitor extreme groups fighting in Syria, warning of a clear and present threat that they could stage chemical attacks, possibly in Europe. I have not heard anybody claim that they are concerned that the Syrian government may use chemical weapons in a subway in Europe city. All those things are happening with the terrorists, Cherkin told reporters. We know that, they, uh, that there is a strong concern with reports that thousands of them have moved to Europe. Could some of them have brought with them components of chemical weapons? Could some of them have brought to Europe city or European country their knowledge of how to build chemical weapons? Obviously, this is a clear and present threat. Yes, it is. And not to mention, uh, we already know that Turkey was the one that actually helped get the, 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 the different chemical uh, agents and the things that were needed that was done on the attack back in 2013 that was blamed on Bashar al-Assad. Uh, that was an MK uh, uh, gentleman there, I forget his name right now, that brought that out. It's, so there's there, the, the real issue with the chemical threat is from the terrorist groups there. It is ISIS, and it's even possibly from some of the groups that the United States is backing as well. This is where the threats are, friends. It's not. The threat is not uh, with the Syrian government gassing people as they keep trying to blame them for. And, and I say that I'm certainly not for the Assad uh, uh, presidency myself. I'm not for Russia as far as communism or any of these things here. I'm just trying to make some points here that we need to pay attention to. Uh, just like when we saw right before the attacks that happened in Belgium, uh, Erdogan was already making the snide remark that what happened in Ankara could easily happen in Belgium. Uh, so it's kind of funny that he kind of seemed to have ins inside uh, uh, information on that. 
and we do know that there's been a lot of evidence un, un, uh, that has been recovered by RT News uh, document teams there that have clearly indicted the Turkish government and President Erdogan uh, for uh, assisting and abetting and, uh, and, and arming everything for ISIS to topple the Syrian government. Of course, we know the Saudis have been involved in that as well, and they don't want to go down without a fight. They're going to make sure that they get what they want in the long run on this. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Uh, we trust this blessing for you, uh, the information we've shared with you tonight. Uh, we do need your support in making this broadcast uh, continue. I try not to come out too much, just a couple of times a month to mention this to you, uh, but your support makes everything happen here. Uh, if you're doing it by mail, we, uh, we still, I mean, we can still receive it at the old address, but we have switched over to a post office box. That's at the end of this broadcast. I still have not had a chance to update the website as of yet. Or you can go online, IsraeliNewsLive.org, donation button there and we thank you for your kindness and your love uh, it's what makes it all happen and for us to be able to get to these places and cover these stories as they break as well i'm stephen benoon with israeli news live shalom